Hey guys, so the purpose of this next video is to talk about really just firing up Visual Studio and how to navigate the very basic aspects of what we're going to use it for. Um, to be honest, a lot of my students have more trouble using the IDE than they do writing the code. So that's a serious problem, so I'm going to put some detail into this if I can. So here we have Visual Studio open, and the first thing I want to draw your attention to is this white sidebar over here that says Solution Explorer at the top. <coughs> so the first thing I want to talk about is what is this solution? So when we're doing, when we're coding in Visual Studio, we're al always going to be using a solution. And what a solution is, is basically a file that keeps track of all of your other files. And I drew this little crude diagram here just to describe kind of the way your files are going to be organized inside of Visual Studio. Uh, it's going to have a single solution file which is ha which has the extension .sln and within the solution there's multiple projects. Uh, probably we'll only have one project when we do a solution but when you get more advanced you can have multiple projects inside of it. And then the project file keeps track of all of your code files. And again, it, at first we're probably only going to have one code file so it might look a little more like this at first. A solution with a project inside and the project is going to have a code file inside of it. So at first you really just need to know that the Solution Explorer is um, helping you navigate through your files because as soon as we tell Visual Studio that we're creating a project it's going to create all this stuff for you. So just to show you the first step and how that works. If you come over here and you say file a new project, this big complicated thing opens up. So <clears throat> just to take uh, two seconds before we continue, I want to talk about .NET in general. Uh, so Microsoft.NET, what that means, it was a big mystery to me. When I graduated college I was a Java developer and everybody was coding in C-sharp and .NET, and I, I didn't know what .NET meant, so uh, I think it'd be useful to at least tell you what it means. So .NET is really, the simplest way I can explain it is it's a bunch of code that Microsoft already wrote that you can reuse if you want to, to help you uh, do things. So what Visual Studio is, this giant program that we just downloaded it is, um, it's what we call an IDE, in integrated development environment. So Visual Studio is the IDE that helps you utilize all of the components of the .NET framework and it helps you write code in a more efficient way. Now we don't have to use an IDE. I could open up Notepad and write some code and find a way to compile it and run it. <clears throat> but the purpose of Visual Studio and any IDE is to make you more efficient and organized and productive in your coding. So just that hopefully gives you an idea of why we're even here in the first place. So I've said I wanted to create a new project and so over here it says there's some templates because the .NET framework is huge. It's not only C Sharp, right? There's also Visual Basic, F Sharp, C++, some other stuff. Um, so we want to do C Sharp. I'm gonna go ahead and expand this menu. And again, you know, even within there, there's a million things that we can use. Uh, iOS, Silverlight, WCF. So there's a whole bunch of different types of code that we can write because the .NET framework has so much stuff available to, to get us started and get us working writing some software. So the, for the purposes of this class, we're almost always going to want to do C Sharp Windows console application. What that means is the code that we're going to write is in the language of C-sharp. Uh, we're going to run it on a Windows machine and console application means that the way that we're going to communicate with our program while it's running is through this console window. So basically when we run our program uh, this black console window will pop up and any output that our program generates will be shown on the console window and any input that we want to uh, if we want to communicate some input to our program uh, through our keyboard, <coughs> excuse me, through our keyboard, we would type it into the console window, type enter, and it would get sent to our program. 
as, as you know, the, a program is really just a set of instructions. So if one of our instructions says, hey, print something to the screen, we can do that through the console window. And if one of the instructions is, hey, read something from the user, we can do that through the console window. So um, <coughs> this is another aspect down here where it says name, location, solution. This is probably the number one source of problems for most first semester students in the classes that I've taught. Uh, especially the location part. So first let's talk about the, the name. So you can call this anything you want. Um, the name is really the project name. So I'll just call it my first project. And the solution name, it really doesn't have to be any different than the project name, but I'm going to call it my first solution, <coughs> just so we can see a difference in the solution explorer over here once it's created. So you can name those anything you want really, but that's fine. Now this, this is a problem because uh, a lot of people don't understand uh, fully the, the directory structure on their Windows machine because there's so many folders. There's like a, a users folder, there's the desktop, there's the downloads folder. You probably have a flash drive that you're going to use. So be very, very careful what you choose for your location here. And I'm going to strongly suggest that you always use the desktop even if you want to save your work to the flash drive because you can always go at the end and just take the stuff and, and move it from your desktop to the flash drive. I find it really really uh, important for the students to um, use just use the desktop so and it's always you know right there boom top one and then you just say select folder. So that right there is what I like to see in the location so it just puts it right on my desktop. <coughs> So this is what it should look like when you're all done. Um, don't these two checkboxes down here create a directory for solution? That's just talking about um, how it's actually going to physically lay out the folders on your computer to mirror the solution and project structure. It's not really important, so it doesn't matter. I usually keep it checked. Do not check add to source control. Whatever you do, I'll talk about that later. So this is what you want it to look like. Uh, C sharp. Windows, console application, whatever project name you want, whatever solution name you want, and the location somewhere that you're never going to forget it or lose it. <coughs> uh, up here, the .NET framework version. Like I said, .NET is just a bunch of stuff that Microsoft wrote, and the higher the num the the higher the version number gets of the framework, the more features there are included. But as I've stated in the previous video. We're going to be using such basic features, they, they pretty much were there since the beginning. So the .NET Framework version doesn't matter at all. So at this point we're ready to go and we can click OK. <coughs> so this is interesting because it did some stuff for us. First of all, there's like three sections on the screen now. And there's some code over here. There's now some directory structure implied and some files over here in the Solution Explorer. And then there's this Properties window that will show us the properties of whatever we highlight in the Solution Explorer. So first of all, go ahead and close the Properties window. We won't really be looking at the properties unless absolutely necessary. This is what you're going to usually be looking at. You're going to be looking at the Solution Explorer and some code. And just to help you, just in case you, you get lost, because a lot of people do this, they'll, you know, they'll accidentally close the code files and they'll close the Solution Explorer and everything over here. Just close everything. And then they'll be looking at this and they'll be like, hey, what the, what the heck, where am I? If you look over here at the top, it still says my first solution, so clearly I'm still inside of that solution I created, but all my views are gone. So if you lose everything, the, the first thing you want to do is go up to this view menu and make sure that you're, you're viewing the solution explorer. That's the, that's the most important thing, is the solution explorer. You can move it around too if you want. You can put it over here. And if it gets messed up, just make sure you drag it to right there, that little anchor right there. We'll put it right back to where it was before. Second thing is to get your code back, you just select or double click on the .cs file which is the uh, C sharp code file you can kind of ignore everything else uh, ignore the app config, the references and the properties for now 
So as you can see, just like in my diagram, we have the solution. Inside of the solution, we have this collapsible project. And inside of the project, we have our code file. So that's good. And this is our code over here. And believe it or not, that's, that's all that there is. This is our first program. So at this point, we can actually run the program. There's a couple of ways to do it. You can hit, you can just press this green um, start button here, the green arrow. And you'll notice the black console window popping up really fast and then going away, I think. And there it did. So that means our program ran. The there, we didn't write really write any instructions, so the program did exactly what we told it to do, which is nothing. And you can also hit F5. I'll hit F5. Did the same thing. Just ran my program again. So that's that. And I also want to show you what this stuff looks like on your computer. So I'm going to actually just close all this again, and I'm going to completely close Visual Studio. So you'll notice now that this folder appeared on my desktop, my first solution. Hey, what do you know? It's the same name as my solution. That was that checkbox that said create a folder with the same name as the solution. Otherwise, it would have just created these two files on my desktop. So I have the folder. I have the SLN file. And inside of there, there's the project directory. And inside of there, there's the CS file. So everything that you saw in the Solution Explorer was really just a convenient way of browsing these files on your computer. And here, as we can see, is the program CS file. I can literally open that up in Notepad and look at it, just like I was opening it before. And there it is. Which leads me to another very important point that gets people mixed up all the time. People do this all the time. They, they go back to Visual Studio. They open it up. <coughs> okay, so I'm in Visual Studio. And now notice at the top, it, it doesn't say anything about my solution. It just says Visual Studio. So I have nothing open right now. And I can confirm that by opening the Solution Explorer. Or, yeah. So in the Solution Explorer, there's nothing there. That means I have nothing open. But sometimes people are not looking at their Solution Explorer. So they just are looking at this. And what they do is they have the CS file associated with Visual Studio. So the, you know, I have it associated with Notepad so that I don't make that mistake. When I do that, it opens this. But some people uh, have it automatically associated with Visual Studio. So when they double click on it, what they do is they get this. <coughs> So what I've done is I've opened up my code file and nothing else directly in Visual Studio. So if I open up my Solution Explorer again, we'll notice it says Solution, Solution 1, Zero Projects. So that means I don't have any project open, I don't have any solution file open, I just have this, I'm basically just looking at a piece of code. You can't run your program when you're doing this. A lot of people do this, they open up their code file and they're like, I don't understand, why is it not running? And the sanity check for this is open up your Solution Explorer and make sure you didn't open the code file. You have to open the solution file. So let's go back and do it the right way. Close that, close that, close that. The simplest way to do it is to close everything and double click on the .sln file, which is the solution file. So when you do that, and now it's open. And now when I open up my Solution Explorer, We'll see that the solution, my first solution, is there. My first project is there. It's initializing. And there is my code file. This is the way you want to open your code file, by double clicking on it in the Solution Explorer. And now I'm back to the point where I can run my program. So those are the basics of um, navigating Visual Studio for the purposes of this class. I will also say that, let's see, what's the last thing I want to say? <coughs> when it comes time, so you have this, you have your folder, and it comes time to move it, you can move this entire folder anywhere you want. You can put it on a flash drive. I would strongly suggest um, using GitHub, and I'm going to have another lecture for that. I'm going to make another video for that separately. So what I would do is when you're done with this, um, I would just make sure that it's uh, synchronized with your online GitHub account, and then you never have to worry about losing your code. So uh, that's pretty much it. That's all you'll need to know about using Visual Studio for the most part uh, for probably the whole class, and if there's anything more, then I'll add it later. I think the next video I'm going to do is talking about uh, GitHub, and maybe if you must, I I'll do this right now, um, if you must, 
not use GitHub. And if you must, like zip this all up. What you can do is you can just right click there and usually your context menu will have some uh, thing that says like send to zipped compressed archive um, and that'll zip up a zip file. I actually have Win, uh, WinRAR installed so I can add, just click one of these to add it to an archive but if I do that compress zip folder that will make a f one single file which is a zip file of all of that stuff. <coughs> but this leads into another, a whole slew of other problems because people get confused. They think the zip file is really a folder because when you click on it, you can browse it just like you can browse a normal folder. And then they try to open up the solution from inside of the zip file, which just makes the world get destroyed. So make sure you look for the little zipper if you're using zip files because this is not a folder. It's a single file with all of those files zipped up. I would stay away from zipping altogether. I would really try to set up a GitHub account and then just when you're done with all your changes, have this folder synchronized online. So I'll get into that in the next video.